This is West Roxbury. This was once a quiet suburb on the outskirts of Boston. The town has a main street called Center Street, which used to be equally as quiet. But this placid street is now loud. Just look at all these trucks. And even when it's just normal traffic, it's still loud. But it wasn't always like this. I dug up some old pictures of the street. Like, look at these. This used to be a much more calm street. They used to have parades on this street. Like this street used to be empty. At some point, at some point they even had a streetcar on it. Like, look at this. The thing is what's happening to West Roxbury is not unique. It's happening to small towns across America. But how did we get here? See, a major part of it comes down to what is allowed to be built. Let's talk about different types of homes. Now there's a lot of nuance that I'm skipping over here, but at its most basic core, there are three types of homes. There are single family homes whose name speaks for themselves. These are typically only allowed to house one family. Sometimes exceptions are made and the home can be renovated for two families, but this typically needs to be approved by the city. There are multifamily homes. These are constructed with the intent to house multiple families. Multifamily homes can be as small as duplexes to townhouses to small apartments usually three to four floors tall. Coming from New York City, I've spent most of my life in townhouses, which are multifamily homes. Then there are apartments and high rises. There's a lot of diversity in this subset, but typically these are taller apartments. They can range from a minimum of five floors to any physically reasonable maximum. Again, there is a lot of variety in the definitions for multifamily and apartments, but at its core, we can think of residential buildings falling into one of these categories. See, the thing is in West Roxbury and through most of West Roxbury's history, it's been illegal to build anything other than single family homes. This is done through zoning laws and is super common in suburbs across America. Here. I have pieces of the West Roxbury zoning map. Let's put it together and see how many multifamily residences we can find. Here's the zoning map of West Roxbury. Do you see where you're allowed to build apartments? Let me help you out. Yeah, that's it. Everything else is either commercial or single family homes. Okay, so we're not allowed to build multifamily units in most of West Roxbury, but that doesn't explain why there's so much traffic and why are there so many trucks? If anything, having fewer apartments would mean fewer people, which means fewer cars on the road. Well, not exactly. See, the thing is most people still want a slice of that American dream. See, in the suburbs, land and construction is cheap as compared to building right in the city core where property is expensive. But if you block residential construction with laws, people will go to the next cheap place. Right outside your suburb, your actual backyard. But these suburbs still only have one route into city centers and commercial areas or one route that Google Maps gives them. In the case of West Roxbury, you also have a main port in Boston. So any deliveries, shipments, or construction have to go through your quaint little town. Bingo, everyone is going through your center street. You may say, but Tim, this should be fine as long as the excerpt towns don't get too big or too successful. Nope, you will never be fine. And that's just mathematics. See, if we imagine our city as a circle, which is the case with most cities, you fundamentally have more land as you go out. This allows for way more development around a single route the further you go from the city. So even if a single outer neighborhood doesn't get too big, the exponentially larger area allows for way more smaller neighborhoods to develop. Secondly, cars really do not scale well. And we're seeing this a lot in my home city of New York. 
Some studies say that just a 10% increase in cars on the road results in a noticeable increase in congestion and traffic. During the pandemic, we saw a car adoption increase of 40% in New York City. Imagine what that does to an already dense city. So if the land outside your exurbs is bigger than your suburb, you will certainly see more than a 10% increase in car adoption. In fact, given the greater land area, you may see double the amount of car adoption. But as I've said before, this problem isn't unique to West Roxbury. Wasteful suburban sprawl on the outskirts of our existing suburbs is still happening today. In fact, due to restrictive zoning laws in suburbs, regressive neighborhood activism, and building codes in cities, the majority of modern housing is being built in this region. So how do we fix this? The dumbest thing we can do is expand our roads. This is typically how a lot of cities across America solve congestion issues. Expanding our roads is really what makes towns go from neighborhoods that once had parades to miserable strode towns. It's also just a cheap and temporary solution, as expanding the road invites more people to drive, which will cause more congestion, more speeding, and more fatalities. I honestly don't want to go into the nuances of induced demand and why expanding lanes is just bad practice, but I'll leave more detailed sources in this video's description for the curious. Okay, idea two. This one is better, but not best. We can move to densify our urban city centers by building more apartments and high rises. This should reduce the cost of housing in urban centers. If we make housing more affordable in city centers, this may reduce the incentive of people moving to the exurbs, which in turn will reduce the number of people that drive through the suburbs. This idea is somewhat problematic as it offsets an issue that is affecting the suburbs onto city centers. You're also taking a gamble that the people who are in the market for single family homes are also in the market for apartments, which is just not realistic. I would recommend upzoning the suburbs as well to add more housing. However, this doesn't really stop your quaint little market street from becoming a highway. In fact, it may make it worse as more people in the area means more people on your road. Okay, idea three, stop building car oriented suburbs. Fundamentally, the issue is that the car doesn't scale well. The car is big, and big things impose geometric constraints on us and our resources. What we really need more of is more transit and train-oriented suburbs. These are suburbs that have slightly more density and mixed zoning and are built around train lines or bus lines. In order to get into city centers, people should be incentivized to take trains, and those trains should run often and frequently. This isn't a new idea. Transit-oriented suburbs exist in America. In fact, you could argue that West Roxbury is a transit-oriented suburb as it's right by a train station, but it really lacks the density that would encourage more people to use that line. Better examples of transit-oriented suburbs exist across Queens, New York, as well as in other countries such as Japan and in many countries in Europe. If we don't start adapting more transit-oriented planning, then the exurbs will do to the suburbs what the suburbs did to the urban city centers they'll plow right through them with highways and road expansion. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Quick outro today. This episode was on the shorter side as we're trying to get these out a bit faster. But I'd love to hear what all of you think about some of the conclusions that we reached in this episode. Do you have a local road in your hometown that's only gotten more and more traffic over the years? Have you noticed increased development in your own suburbs, in your backyard? If you have, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to know what city you're in or what city you've been seeing this happen to. As always, remember to like and subscribe and share the video with your friends if you really enjoyed it. If you really, really enjoyed it, remember to hit that super like button down below. The financial support goes towards the episode and really helps us out. And as always, until next time, remember to keep on walking, biking, taking the train or whatever sustainable mode of transportation you use to get around. Whew. All right. See ya.